In this video, we are looking at scatter graphs. Scatter graphs are also known as scatter plots and scatter diagrams. They show the relationship between two variables. Let's take a look at the example. Neil owns an ice cream van. This scatter diagram shows information on the temperature and number of ice creams he sold each afternoon from the 1st of August to the 7th of August. Notice the information covers seven afternoons, the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th and 7th of August. Part A asks why there are seven crosses on the diagram. Well, there is one cross for each afternoon. For example, this cross here tells us that the temperature was 20 degrees one afternoon, and on that afternoon, Neil sold 33 ice creams. So we can write our answer that there is one cross for each afternoon. Notice, by the way, that just from this diagram, we can't tell which cross represents which date, but we know that the seven of them put together cover the seven afternoons from the 1st to the 7th of August. In part B, we're told that it was 21 degrees and that Neil sold 40 ice creams. We need to plot this on the graph, so I will read along to 21 on the temperature axis and up to 40 here and plot the point with a cross. In part C we need to describe the correlation. Correlation is a measure of how closely two variables are related. In this case it seems like the warmer it gets the more ice cream Neil sells. This suggests a positive correlation. You have a positive correlation if, when one variable increases, then the other also increases. For a negative correlation, imagine instead the graph of the sale of woolly hats against temperature. The warmer it gets, the fewer woolly hats will get sold. So a scatter diagram might look like this. You have a negative correlation in this case. A negative correlation is when one variable increases, the other variable decreases. Let's get back to the question. In part D, we need to draw a line of best fit. This is a straight line that tries to be close to the points plotted here. Now, there is a mathematical way to do this accurately, but at GCSE, you just do this by eye and try to get a reasonably good best fit line. Typically, you want to have roughly half the points above your best fit line and about half the points below. So this here would be suitable. Notice I've not extended the line too far beyond the range of data that I've got which we'll come back to in part F. In part E, we need to use our line of best fit to estimate the number of ice creams Neil sold on another day when the temperature was 28 degrees. For this, I read up from 28 degrees to the line of best fit, and then I read across and I get 62. Based on the data, this seems like a reasonable estimate for how many ice creams he would have sold. Bear in mind, though, that this is only an estimate. We can't know for certain. In part F, we're again being asked to make an estimate for a day that has a temperature of only 10 degrees. It doesn't make sense to do this because this is well outside the range of data that we have. All of the information that we have is for days where the temperature was 20 degrees or higher. So it's not a good idea to continue the line of best fit that we have. 
outside that range of data. In fact, we can see it's a bad idea because if we did continue the line, we'd end up having to predict a negative number of ice cream sales for, for example, a five degrees day. And that just doesn't make sense. So in general, it's a bad idea to try to use a scatter diagram to make predictions or estimates outside the range of data that you've already got. And that's why I only drew my line of best fit in part D as far as this. So our answer to question F is that no, it does not make sense because 10 degrees is outside the range of our data.